As we have done this morning, we'll continue on this morning. I want to remind that we have gifts for all of you, the women, the moms that we forgot to hand out. And um, I don't want to be in trouble with Miss Charlotte, so we, we want to make sure that every mom <laughs> could be mom. One day we'll be mom. Please take one. Amen. Amen. They'll be in the back, and uh, the ushers will see that you get one. And so please take one. Amen. As soon as we pay to honor moms, we want to know that after Jesus, the greatest gift of all, the next greatest gift, his mother. I believe that. I believe that we're a nation that has went wrong when we forgot about the flag, God, the flag, mom, and apple pie. It, it, it sounds so silly, but it's the practical things that has made a nation a nation. To keep things simple, to understand what's important in this world. And as we look today, um, Mike said it, when it all comes down to it, this is all we have. Stuff is just what it is. All we have is each other. And so as we come this morning, I want us to know that the Word of God tells us in Philippians 1, I thank my God every time I remember you. And I would believe that that would be the prayer as Paul was writing it to the church of Philippi, that he was letting them know that how important they were. But I believe on this day here we can say, I pray that, and I thank God every time I remember my mother, and I pray that would be your prayer. That every time that we would think about her, good day or bad day, that we would thank God for her. That we would understand that there's a great love, and I want to start out by letting us know what the Word of God has to say. In Genesis chapter 2 it says, The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the heaven, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up his place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God, God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And then the man said, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of me, out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. And scripture tells us that God created man, formed him out of the dust. He breathed the spirit of life into him. The Holy Spirit brought life out of that dust and man became a living being. But it says after Adam had named all of the animals and gave name to them in which they are called today, it said he looked around and God noticed there was something missing. Adam was alone. The scripture tells us that he put Adam into a deep sleep. And then from Adam's rib, he made a woman. She's called woman because it still in the translation still means man. So she's equal. Equal to everything that God had given Adam, he also had given now to woman. There was no higher than that, but there's an order of things as we talked about the order of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But equal. And so it is with man and woman. This woman was a blessing uh, uh, that had came from that, that he, she would be a helpmate that would be there to run with him, to run alongside him, to encourage him, to build him up, and together they would fulfill the plan that God had for their lives. 
Adam said that she was bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. And he called her, named her. And then it says that, Scripture goes on to tell us, that they stood in the glory of God and they were naked and were not ashamed. And I was thinking back, some of us remember that day, but thank God today for clothes. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself because they tell people when they're going to speak to crowds that don't be nervous, just look out and, and, and just imagine everybody that you're speaking to is naked. That ain't happening here. I just want you to know that. Just want you, I want you fully clothed in the glory of God. Amen. The scripture tells us that the man called his wife name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And that not only did he call her woman equal to himself, but then he described her as the mother of all living. The scriptures tell us in chapters 3 and 4, now Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother, Abel. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. And then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? We understand that God has said that in Scripture. But here it was, man and woman. You sitting here today, each and every one of you, and each and every one of us, we have a mother whose mother had a mother whose mother had a mother. But here it was Eve, the mother of all living things, and there was no copy before her. She said, the scripture tells us that she gave birth to two boys. And she was called woman and up to the day that they, Adam and Eve sinned. And then it says Adam called her Eve, the mother of all living things. She gave birth to these two boys. For the first time, she was the first woman to endure birth and she did it with pain because of sin. She gave birth, she carried, and she held on, and she felt every movement within her, and she gave birth to Cain and gave birth to Abel. Eve experienced many things that some of you mothers have experienced. She had experienced what life was like with God, and then she experienced life with the absence of God. She understood what it was to have the joy of the Lord, and she also understood the sadness that comes when God is not in the midst. And this lady, the mother of all living things, had these two boys, and one day they were out there in the field working, and the older brother and the younger brother got into it. And the older brother killed the younger brother. And God said, what have you done? But I would imagine when I read that, I thought, that's what the mom said. What have you done? How many of us as children have ever heard your mother say, what have you done? What were you thinking? No. So she was, the question was asked, no time in history had there been such a thing called death. But now this mom was experiencing something for the first time she knew nothing about. All she had knew that God had made things and everything was good, had given her two sons and everything was good. And then she found out in the hardship of life that with life there also comes death. And she found herself with the child that she loved who had died by a child whom she loved. I just want you to see that even in the beginning, 
moms have been going through a lot of things. Eve experienced it, and many of you have experienced it in this room. She found herself living beyond her child. Now, how old would that have been? Adam was 900 and something years old when he died. Up to 800 and something years old, he and Eve were still having kids. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Thank God I'm not Eve. You know, Kathy, you're close. <laughs> she saw a lot in her life. But she was experiencing something that mom should have never have experienced. She experienced disobedience in her children. She experienced death as a child. She experienced what the hardships of life came. With sin, there came the trouble of how to raise the garden. You're dealing with weeds and dealing with the stuff that you didn't have true green taken care of. She had to deal with all of the things that life brought to them. Heartaches and pain. But then the scripture goes on to tell us that God blessed her. The scripture goes on and tells us that Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. To Seth also was born a son, Enosh. And at that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. Eve knew joy, Eve knew pain, but she was praised the mother of all living things. See, this morning, what I want us to see that in Scripture as we come to, to talk about mom, I just want to praise you in the gates. I'm not saying that you're perfect. I'm not saying you do everything right. I just want to praise you because of the mantle that you have upon your life. You are a mom, a mother. You have had to experience what it is to give birth. You have experienced all of those things that come, heartaches, joy, the, the, the troubles that come along the way. Some of you have been fortunate. You, no, it ain't nothing you had any perfect. Because like our children, I know they're not perfect because we know their mother and father. And their father is far from perfect. Heartaches, heartbreaks. The trouble of motherhood is that even with all that comes with it, you have the greatest calling that a woman can have. See, the word of God is clear that when he called Lee, Eve the mother of living things, that, that he was saying that in her comes life. In her comes the goodness of God. In her, all that God has in store is for her. And so God has blessed. God has done that that only he can do. And so the scripture tells us that how then that God had blessed, gave Eve another son, and it says, and through that, the world became lovers of God that began to praise God. Heartaches, heartbreaks, trouble along the way, and yet in the midst, they learned to praise God. I believe that sometimes we need to be encouraged by the fact that everybody goes through something, but because of God, we have an opportunity to be able to praise God no matter what we find ourselves going through. I believe that Eve was praising God when she said he gave me another son. I've lost a, a son through the death caused by his brother. But scripture lets us know clear that also Cain was punished and he was driven from the land. So she actually lost two sons because of one act. Isaiah 66 says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. That in Isaiah that the word of God says that I'm going to give you a nation, I'm going to bring a nation out of nothing. And I'm going to cause it to be. And as a mother comforts her child, I will comfort you, O Israel. And I will comfort you over Jerusalem. 
I believe that the same God who spoke to uh, over Israel spoke that over Eve. I will be God for you and I will comfort you and I will bless you and I will be your strength and I will be everything for you. And I believe that's what he was saying to all moms. I understand that you will go through something but I will bring life in you. And I will bring life to you. It was she who shares her life with us, Mom. And when as yet our members were unformed, she carried us in the valley of the shadow of death and walked it with us and, and, and she was the light of our life. I believe that mothers who carry their children with joy have joyous children. Mothers who carry their child and praise over their children have blessed children. And says that she carries us through the morning sickness, pain of delivery, and then she rejoices as she places her arms around us. Those same arms of a mom become our refuge and stronghold. It was she who taught our baby feet to go, and she lift us up over the rough places in life. That's what you do, moms. You tell them, and then you carry them. Not only when they were toddlers, but even as they grew up and, and they were able to walk on their own, there were some times when life circumstances, situations got rough, and I've seen moms place them on the hip and carry them over the rough things of life. Her hands blessed. They took care of us and they kept us safe by day and by night. Her mother's work was never done. She put the book under our arms and started us off to school. And she cried and said she was sending us off to war. But best of all, she taught our babies to move their lips in the praise of Jesus. She told us our first story about the baby born in a manger who would become a savior of love for us. So where does honoring mom begin? The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And the text this morning, which comes from the 10th commandment, says to us, honor thy father and thy mother, and Jenny shared that. And the husband is to honor his wife. Because I believe that children learn to honor mom by the way father honors his wife. Honoring means that you lift her up. You place high value upon her and you let her know that next to God, nothing is more important than who she is. We honor her to let her know that she's the most valuable part of our lives. And as you speak to her and as you honor her and as you lift her up to become all that God would have her to be, your children will know who she is and they will honor her as, she, as they watch you honor her. First Peter 3 tells us, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor to your wife. Then it says that you as a child of God need to know how to submit yourself to God. And now that that, she will learn submission, not because you lord over her, because that she chooses to respect you. But sometimes when men are not respected by their wives, my question to many of the men are that, have you given honor to her? And has she saw you submitting yourself unto a living God? See, if you don't know how to submit, why would she know how to submit to you? She learns by watching that man walk forward. See, there's a lot in being a wife. There's a lot being a mom. And all of those things that will make her great is it comes out of the things of the Lord. The Word of God tells us in Ephesians 5, 33, Let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself. The Word goes on to tell us that a man will not give himself a bloody nose, so why would he ever harm his wife? The child will know how to honor the mother by watching the father honor his wife. And the son will know how to take care of his wife by watching dad take care of his mom. And the daughter will know what kind of man to get 
to go after. Not one that she has to raise up to become a man, but she will find a man that will treat her like she has watched her mother be treated. Mother's Day. When you talk about moms, it's not just about the fact that we want to honor you for giving birth to us. But what we want you to see is the importance of your role and that when it's done right in the things of God and how lives will be touched and transformed because of it. And motherhood is only has a special mark upon it because why? How the father loves his wife. It's how the mother then truly is honored. And children begin to understand how to value of it. I believe God's area of accountability for the husband begins in the home with the wife the mother of his children, before your career, before your church involvement, before anything else, the wife is to be the center of your attention. And I hope you will make much of this day, Mother's Day. I'm saying that to you because I remember uttering at times in my life, yeah, my mom. I made sure the kids brought her something. She said, what do you got for me? I said, yeah, my mom. But one day I learned to understand was that I want to honor her because she is the mother of my children. And my children are blessed. My children are blessed. They got the greatest mom in the whole world. She wasn't always that way. I don't listen. She didn't know what it was to be a mom. But she learned and she grew. And what she began to do was deny herself. And she put her babies first. The extension of her arm not only moved beyond her own children, but to the, the mates in whom they married. They became sons and daughters. She grew. That if you had asked her today what her ministry is, she would say, my family. That's a lot. We men are trying to conquer the world, but the word of God tells us nothing becomes more important in this world other than God first and then his wife, the mother of his children. There were some scriptures that I, I saw and I, I wanted to read them concerning motherhood. In Psalms 27, 127, verse 3, Children are the heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. And that's what God says about children. And sometimes mothers have looked at that text and said, A reward? Mm. Proverbs 17, 6 says, Children's children are a crown to the age. And parents are the pride of their children. It tells us that the grandparent is so blessed to have the grandchild. For it said here that the children's children are a crown to the age, to the grandparent. And the parents are the pride of their children. That grandma and grandpa love them so. And it makes the mother proud. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Many of us have went astray somewhere along the way, but we were raised in the way of the Lord, and somehow we found ourselves coming back to Jesus. The Word of God, powerful, is alive. My favorite verse was 29, 15 of Proverbs. A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom. But a child left undisciplined disgraces his mother. You cannot go by the world's teaching today. Parents, be a parent to your child. Do not listen to the world that tells you that your child needs time out. They get time out, the word says, after the rod. Because if you don't love your child in the way that God has commanded you to love them, 
Chief Knuckles will take care of your child. And he won't do it with, with love. He'll do it because it's his job. He will ask them to assume the position. He will cuff them. Then they will send them off to a place called Illinois River Correctional Center. They will be told when to get up and when to go to bed, when to eat, when to sit down. And they will not do it in love. Isn't that right, Bob? That's right. That's right. First, we would be wise to raise our children in a godly manner. And in that godly manner, it is also in instructing them on how to live and correcting them when they're wrong. Because the world will do that and they will not do it in love. And so spare your child by not sparing the rod. I'm not telling you to beat your children. But I have said and I'll say it again. I believe that the word of God that says the child that disobeys would not pay any attention, would not listen to the elders, said bring that child before the elders and stone that child. And I believe if we have one good stoning a year, But this is not Father's Day, this is Mother's Day. <laughs> Titus 2, 3 through 5 says, Likewise, teach the older women to, to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. And then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, and to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their own husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. So the word this morning comes to us and says, praise her at the gate. I didn't want to compare my wife or the rest of the mothers here today by the first part of Proverbs 31. Because, see, sometimes moms have not been like the Proverb 31 wife that starts in verse 10. But what it said was that in the Lord verses, it says, honor her and respect her. Lift her up and exalt her. Tell everyone how great she is because she has been good to her family. And the Word of God is so clear to us. It says she opens up her mouth with wisdom and teaches and teaching of kindness is on her tongue. But if you looked at verse 1, it talks about the king, Lemuel. And it is the teachings from his mother. This mom says to him, What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? Now what that translates in today is that, I went through 36 hours of labor. I carried you for nine months and I was sick the whole time. You never stopped moving. I never got a night's nice rest the whole time. And I'm saying to you, son of my womb, what in the world are you doing? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? That part's important because she's saying, I have prayed for you. I've asked God's hand to be upon you. And I have vowed, God, I teach me, give me the wisdom that I may raise this son and daughter to bring you glory and bring you honor. See, many of us are the byproduct of a mother's prayer. A mom who has prayed for us, cared for us, before she desired us to walk in the things of God. And though it comes short and she has asked that question, what are you doing, son of my womb, daughter of my womb, she is saying to this king, listen to me, for I prayed a vow over you. Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. That there's a certain woman out there for you, not just a woman, but a woman that will give God honor and give him glory. That's the one you're on after. For anything that will not give God, she won't give God honor. She will not know how to be a wife for you. And if he won't give God honor, he will not be a husband for you. And so her wisdom is out there. Said they will take all your strength, they will wear you out. She goes on to tell her son this. 
It is not for a kings or lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink. Least they drink and forget what has been decreed and perverse the rights of all the afflicted. She was telling this king, you're in charge of things. And if you get caught up in the things of the world, you'll forget what you were called to do. When it looks like in the scriptures that we look at today, it says that we're a light in the midst of a sinful generation. We are the salt of the earth. It says you'll forget what your calling is when you get caught up in the things of the world. When you make Christ your everything and now you get so busy with the things of the Lord, you of the, you, of the world, you'll forget what God has called you for. You'll forget about that there's others that needed to know of the love of Christ and, and that God forgives us of sin and that he is there for us. And that he is able to hold us in the times of, of despair. It says don't get caught up in the things of the world. Do not drink the wine and don't drink strong drinks. Don't get caught up in the eyes of life and forget your decree, the call upon your life. It says give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to the to those that are in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember the misery no more. So he said there are times that the world needs to be comforted. People need to be comforted because they're going through. So it says pour out to them that they might be comforted. It says here wine, not strong drink. But what it's saying is give them the love of God. Give them that thing that will refresh them and hold them in the midst of their pain and discomfort. this morning I saw one of our own daughters here who's spending her first Mother's Day without her mother and so we have prayed for you Leah we have prayed for you and yet this is what it's saying in those times let us pour out the love of God and comfort and hold them in their time of distress and their time of pain. Let us minister to them and not get caught up and be so busy with the things of the world. It tells us how to love. She went on to give her son instructions. It says take care of the poor and remember them in their misery. Understand that they're there, but you can give them hope and let them know there are better days to come. But when you're caught up in yourself, you'll never encourage other people to be about the things that God has called them to. The wisdom of a mom. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Walk in the way that God has called you to walk, and that way you can speak for them who can't speak for themselves. You can stand there and be strong for the unborn. You can be encouragers to them who can't speak for themselves. The aging and those with deformities, those who are not clothed in their right mind. See, the world is not their helper. The government assistance is not what keeps them. It's when the church rises up and becomes the church, it says they will be kept and someone will speak for them. Open your mouth, judge righteously, righteously, and defend the rights of the poor and the needy. The wisdom of this mom came forth to the son and said, there's a way you ought to live. And God has placed you in a place of authority because I've pointed you to Jesus. He has showed you how to be, and, and I just want to remind you, be a light in your life. Let him lead you and guide you in every place. The love of this mom. And so the scripture told us today, and it says to us, she opened her mouth with wisdom and she teaches the kindness with her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. The bread of idleness is that she's not a gossip of busy body, she's taking care of stuff. She's out there doing the things that are wholesome and good. She's not spending all of her time on Candy Crush and whatever else they might be doing. Josie B's or whatever else. 
but she's doing the things that God would have her to do. Her children rise up and they call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you have surpassed them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands. <coughs> Psalms 4, 4 says it this way, and this is my closing for you mothers this day. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all that the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition. And with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, moms, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. And then to us children who have mothers, whatever you have learned and received and heard and seen in them, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. We put Christ first in everything. But after Christ, God has given us moms. And so moms, we thank God for you today. We thank God for the love that you display. We thank you for the kindness. And at 64, I am so glad I have my mom. Because when things get tough, she prays for me. She prays with me. She encourages me. And she said to her baby boy, no matter what you're going through, it's going to be all right. God has blessed us today by letting us know the importance of each, all that he has created in man and in woman. He has let us know that we can walk in the things of God and walk in the love of God. He has reminded us that no matter what we're going through, if we'll just hold on to his teaching, we'll still be able to rejoice. May not be able to run like we used to run, but we still got our gym shoes on just in case. The love of a mother. There's nothing like it or compares to it except the love of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior. And this morning I'm thankful for moms, but I'm more thankful for Jesus. Who out of the dust he formed a man, and from the rib of a man he created a woman. He called her Eve, and she was the mother of all living things. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, you are created to be loved by Him. You are created to serve Him. You are created to walk with Him. You are created to be blessed by Him. If you have never received Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask that you would come today. That even though you know the love of a mother, I'm going to tell you there's nothing more greater than the love of God through Christ Jesus Christ our Lord the forgiver of sin and the giver of new life. That will walk with you when mom's no longer there to walk with you, he'll walk with you. And when she's no longer there to hold you, he will hold you. And when the rough way comes your way, he will pick you up and he will make the crooked way straight and the rough way smooth. He'll be your strength. So if you don't know Christ, we're going to ask that you would come today. If you're needing prayer, we'll pray with you. And if you desire to be a member of First Baptist Church, we will welcome you. But this morning, I want us to be mindful of this fact. That each and every one of us have been blessed. 
Whether she's been a good mom or a bad mom, a perfect mom, imperfect mom, she was still the only mom you ever had. And you would not be if it wasn't for her.
that. 